This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. The information presented on Fix It 101 is meant to provide general information about the topics discussed and is not necessarily the opinion of Mississippi Public Broadcasting. The information presented does not create any type of relationship between the host and guests and the listening audience. Please consult a licensed contractor for guidance about your home improvement or related questions. Join us each week for Everyday Tech on MPB Think Radio. We have an IT expert, a computer repair ace, and we troubleshoot your problems on the phones as well. Everyday Tech, Wednesdays at 10 on MPB Think Radio. Download the podcast now or listen on YouTube on the MPB Think Radio channel. From MPB Think Radio, this is Fix It 101, the home improvement show to help you do it yourself. I'm Jason Klein here with Pam Pibus, ASHI Certified Inspector at Inspect It Like a Girl and Licensed Contractor Jeff Sammons from Houseworks. You can join the conversation with us this morning. Send an email to fixit101 at mpbonline.org. Now, normally I would say, how are you guys doing this morning? I'm not going to do that because Scott's already on the line in Mobile. Hey, come and on. And I figured <laughs> we're not going to do anything better than answer this guy's uh, call. So, Scott, how's it going? Hey, it, it's going great. How are you guys? Very good. So what would you like to open the show with this morning? Well, I have a house. I've, I've never had a wood-sided house before. All of them have been brick up until this point. Mm-hmm. Um, from what I understand, this is T-111 siding. It, it has, it's kind of like plywood, and it has kind of a stripe going up and down. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm familiar. It, that is what it is, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, um, and it's rotting from the bottom. Yes, sir. Right. Um, and so I can't find really any information on really how to maintain this. T-111 is a plywood product, meaning it's it's laminated, glued together. Um, it is built for exterior. Uh, is it what we should be using? Absolutely not. Well, you should take that off <laughs> and, and use a... Um, Use a concrete product. Doesn't have to be hardy. Use a concrete product, and um, because it, it, it if it gets wet now, okay. Let's let's back up two two seconds. You can take a piece of wood and put it in water, and it will never rot. It can sit there forever. Right. What what happens while wood rots is because it's wet, dry, wet, dry. Um, so. If if you could get that wood to where it's not going to get wet anymore and you keep it painted and, and, and all this stuff, you probably have some life in it. But the reality of that is probably not realistic. Yeah, if it's going down to, and, and if you're getting runoff from your roof right. and you're getting splashback on that siding, that can be a problem too. Let me give you some suggestions because I, I had a similar situation with siding on my house. It wasn't that it was rotting, it was falling off. So mm-hmm. I ended up taking it off and replacing it with a product like what Jeff was saying. So what you might be able to do is that if your siding is running from soffit to ground is just take off you know, some of the bottom right? and come in with something else. That is the beauty of this. If you think about it, um, Scott, if, if you're working with that product to know exactly what you're talking about and the great thing about it is it's just wood, you can cut it out. That's if right. you do have rotten parts, cut it out regardless of whether, you know, regardless they, they've got to go. You'll never dry them out. They'll never be right again. They'll always be puffy and, and, and full of, you know, junk, they're going to smell after a while, cut it out completely. And, and if you're uh, doing what Jeff says and just uh, get rid of that, um, you know, it's just wood. It's eventually going to go. Yeah, but that can get expensive. I mean, right. it, well, it would be expensive well, to pull you, it all off and reside the house. Well, if you just put back like a ply how, instead of a how, instead of a, uh, a, a cement board, right. you could you could uh, vinyl side it. Well, you can if do you that, wrap but, it. but, you know, how, how expensive is it when it – now it's just rot on the outside. How expensive is it when it starts rotting your two-by-fours? and Right, right. So, yeah, when it starts letting stuff in. Oh, That's yeah. why I'm saying if if you're, you, if economics is a thing and you can't just afford, cut it, and, cut it up, yeah. put in a brick ledge, put in a foam ledge, put in a product that's not going. I don't particularly like vinyl in that situation. Right. But something along the bottom edge that all the way around, I used a product, and I can't remember the name of it right now, but it was a foam board that looks like stone. 
And I, it was such an easy DIY project for me. I, I took the siding off. I actually um, took my OSB off, which was plywood because the house is so old. Uh-huh. And I, I'm a nerd enough that my house was built in 58, so I insulated. <laughs> Right. I put right. insulation panels in the wall <laughs> sure. because we didn't have those whenever that happened. Right. There was newspaper in the walls. But I insulated, and then I just came back with plywood, mm-hmm. um, and I didn't use OSB. I just, because I, I want a really good three-quarter inch plywood, and I had them cut it for me down at the H- home store. Uh, and jargon then, stop here real quick. OSB is like this put together wood, yeah. glued together wood that they use to side houses and, and put down. You know, it's it's the underneath part of right. the side of your house. And it's a good product. I was actually looking for stability as much as anything right. I needed on this house because it was racking a little bit. But yeah, you could do that. And that was a DIY project. It took me, you know, a couple of months to get it all done, but it was pretty easy. What do you think, um, Scott? Um, yeah, I guess. That's what I'm going to have to do. My, when you're when you're saying that there's a, a product like the foam board or something like that, or, or that this stuff is pretty much always going to fail down here because it rains every day. Right. Uh, is there a like a concrete product that mimics the look of it? So if I like cut out the bottom, I can replace it with something, and it'll basically not it? not really. They make a four by nine. But it, but it's it's to mimic uh, stucco, and it doesn't do a good job of that. <laughs> um, now, um, if if it's not in the budget, no, number one, take all the siding off and go back with your concrete board. Number two, if it's not in the budget, cut up a foot or so, and you could always um, do some Z flashing, and then put your lap siding under that piece of piece of t111 um i don't like that look um again <laughs> again I, i'm going back to option one i'm taking the siding off so that's jeff that's i'm getting jeff. a saw pam's getting a saw right <laughs> jason and pam are getting a saw <laughs> well what is it tim is it scott scott, scott. i'm yeah. i'm, I'm, I'm Whatever, uh, Scott, is is it in the budget to take the siding off? Is that not feasible? Not really. Okay. Uh, at this there point, you go. I, um, I, you know, I probably got maybe linear foot, maybe around forty or sixty foot that's starting to do this to the bottom. Okay. Uh-huh. Well, what what if you do it like this? Why don't you eat it like an elephant? Why don't you take one one elevation at a time? Uh, and do it that way huh yeah it's not a bad idea and and it can be staggered it doesn't happen it doesn't have to happen all in one weekend no i mean look do 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 the do the front elevation or side elevation whatever's most serious do that first get that paid for and the good thing about hardy you would not have to paint it immediately it comes primed um so just some food for thought and, and the hardy board looks like this, so it's fairly well made. Looks better. Uh, well, yeah, it's it's not going to look like what you have. Nothing is going to look like what you have in, in my mind right, right now. Right. Um, I've seen some at some of the local building supply, not your big box hardware right, stores, but a right. building supply. Show enough building supply. Sure, sure. You can go in there and ask them for samples, and some of them they're trying to match that for this very reason. Yeah. So you would have to look at that. That's a good point. Yeah, and and see. Might as well give it a shot. Yeah, and yeah. let me tell you what I did is I started in the back because it was a DIY right. project. There, there you go. <laughs> You're starting in the back like, because if the first one you try is not going to look no, as good as that. I thought I'm going to hide all the boo-boos. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, That's so my, my messed up stuff is in the backyard. But my front, the front of my house, I... You know, I think it looks pretty good now because I took the, hey, the brick fell off and I, I came back and redid it. And I drove past your house yesterday. I think it looks real nice. Doesn't it there look good? Go. Yeah, yeah. I'm does. real proud of, and it's been years in the coming, but um, you know, little by slowly. Little I, by slowly. Little by slowly. I got Scott, it. Scott, I hope these ideas help out. Grab one of them and run. Thank you, and and they will. And you know, it's it's just something I got to deal with. Yes, sir. That, that's right. Sorry about that's, that. That's the right attitude. Yeah, yeah. All right, thank, thank you, you, sir. 
Appreciate it. All right. So last night until 930, I was up with my dishwasher. <laughs> so uh, uh, a week, I guess maybe two weeks ago, uh, my wife said the dishwasher is leaking in the front mm. of uh, right there in front of the dishwasher. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, easiest, quickest is probably the seals. Why don't I just replace the rubber seals on, on, the, on the front of the dishwasher? There are two rubber seals. Um, and believe it or not, it's something that you can go and get online, uh, go to the manufacturer or whatever. And these things are pretty plentiful. So it's not something I had to wait for the slow boat for. They're, yeah. they're, they just, they just came, um, ordered them one day. They showed up the next day. Oh, nice. Nice. So, so I was able to put one of the seals on the dishwasher. By the way, the old seals just pull right out. I was, I was yeah, a little shocked. They go shocked. on a groove. They go a on a groove. groove. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I was just shocked so but anyway it 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 came out great i i finally got it all put back together last night i'm a little afraid to try it yet <laughs> <laughs> well no <laughs> i'll get there oh man that's uh, the first but, thing i do is turn it on oh, wait, 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 wait. so you can get your check well yeah. hang on you know it, it looks good right now i don't <laughs> it's pretty yeah i can get another few hours out of it before i just get disappointed if it doesn't work my car but, looks good but it, it just won't run it just right, sits right. there in the driveway yeah I, I'll, I'll say that i will give it a shot and and i don't know if i fix it or not but but it was it was worth 25 dollars worth of rubber seals to try to sure. try it. I, I see so many dishwashers and clothes washers and things like that on the side of the road that i know man that's just one little yeah. thing yep yeah. That is stopping that from being a working problem. Well, let me ask you a question about your project. You mm -hmm. thought it was the gasket. Did you consider turning it on and getting down there to see if that's where the water was dripping well, out? Well, and and, <laughs> and I have seen, uh, we have seen some lines. Okay, this these, they are stainless. Yeah. So when water drips out of stainless, boy, you can see it. Mm -hmm. You can't miss that. Okay, so, so it's not the... It's not the pump. No, no. Well, that, okay. That's okay. The, something I was wondering sure. about was that, you know. So or the connection I'm, underneath. Right. 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 I'm, and I'm, I'm, hoping, problems with that. I'm hoping that it's the smallest problem, which I, would be I, the seal. I, well, I would think the seal would not go out, but, you know. Sometimes they do if something's rubbing up against it right. or if it's not right. sitting right. Yeah. And something that we'll see in home inspections is that, you know, a lot of people don't use their dishwasher. They just use it to dry true. their dishes. Well, true. Right. Some folks do that. Now, something that's not being used, mm -hmm. what will happen is that that seal will dry right. Mm -hmm. Right. And yeah. then the home inspector comes along and, and, and it tests leaks. it and it leaks. Well, then what will happen, you've now lubricated that gasket. And it will leak again until it sits there for another six months. Right, right, right. right. So you have to, you know, but you're using yours. Oh, yes. As much as we can, I promise. Yeah, on a regular basis. Right. So hopefully that's the, the, the solution. Right. Okay, so we got to get to some calls here. Let's go to Jeff and Byram. Jeff, what's going on? Hey, guys. How you doing this morning? Very good, sir. What's going on with you? Well, um, in my fireplace in my living room, I, um, which is facing my my backyard i've had this issue before maybe about a year and a half ago um i came in last night and there was water on the floor and um so of course i soaked it up and everything but um the first time i had the issue um my gutters um were sagging in that area or stopped up or something and they were dumping water onto the uh the brick on the outside, on that same side that it was, mm -hmm. the water was going up on the inside. And so what I did then was I got somebody out to, to uh, fix the, the gutters mm -hmm. and um, uh, get that water flowing again, and I didn't have a problem again. Well, uh, I'm thinking that there's some sagging that's happened again with those gutters and it's dumping water again, but I want to know what well, I'm what I'm thinking is that I need to get somebody out to seal the bricks uh, or to reseal the bricks and then to fix the uh, the, the slant on the gutters again. What's, what's going on with your gutters? Are there, are there trees over your gutters? No. Um, I think, one, I think the last people that did, it did a shoddy job. Ah, okay. Uh, okay. Well, that would explain it. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't have a proper slant. 
Okay. So it's not flowing all okay, so it's got a negative. It's probably flowing back yeah. towards the fireplace, yeah. correct? Right. Yeah, yeah, and when we get as much rain as we've gotten, yes, you know, the past we're gonna find days, all kinds of leaks right now. Yeah. <laughs> well, yes. Now, Jeff, I can remember your name, so um, <laughs> um, I, I'm 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 leaning towards uh, getting a professional out there because there is it could be so many things. Um, it could be flashing issues. Could be a chimney cap. It could be a chimney cap. Um, there, there, there are a lot of issues that could be going on with that. I would, I would hire a professional to come out there and actually find out where this leak is coming, so we're not just throwing dollars at it. You know, uh -huh. well, maybe it's the gutters. Well, maybe it's this. Maybe uh -huh. it's that. I would spend a few dollars up front, diagnose uh -huh. the problem then get a bid on what it's going to take to fix it. I will say that, Jeff. We had, uh, uh, if you ever listened to the show a long time ago, Del uh -huh. Moore was on. He was a, a roofer and, and uh -huh. used to always say that where where you're seeing water doesn't necessarily have anything right. to do with where, where the leak is. is. So, so uh -huh. definitely checking that out because that water could be coming from 20 feet away and you'd have no uh -huh. idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gotcha. You could get a yep. chimney sweep out there. Let them, is it a wood burning uh, fireplace or is it? Uh, yeah. So it's a wood burning. It's, yeah. it's got gas assisted, but it's. Okay. So it's, it's a real chimney. Yeah. yeah. I what's, get a what's, sweep. What's, what's, what's the age on it? Uh, the house was 1970. Okay. Um, so yeah. it's not, you know. Okay, so yeah, it could have some deterioration on, um, on the, on the top of the chimney, that, mm -hmm. and that that may very well be where it's coming yeah, from. Coming I down see the it cap, a lot. Right. Yeah, that's right. One of the things that you could do, Jeff, to kind of, if you can, if you can get in your attic, and and see this chimney, mm -hmm. then you can actually, if it's brick on the inside, then you're not going to be able to do this. But a lot of times what I'll do is when I get up in an attic, I'll see that metal flue going up to that mm -hmm. cap and there's streaks of water mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> coming you, down it. You know, there may be another idea for this time of year. I know exactly what you're talking about. You know, we've had, uh, you talk about a contractor coming out. We had, um, and we're going to be having Seth Bledsoe on the show again, who's who's our chimney sweep, one of our chimney sweep guys, and and they do inspections of caps uh, mm -hmm. on chimneys sure. and things like that. Flashing too, as a matter of fact. Right, and if you're burning okay. wood in this thing, I would I get mine checked every year. Right. I have it cleaned yeah. and checked yeah. every but, year. But a chimney sweep could tell you if if your chimney is is crumbling or what's going on with it. You know. That would be someone you could call. Anyway. Right. Yeah, and right. another thing you could think about is that you could get, um, I don't know if roofers have this, home inspectors. Well, our company has, we're the first company that started using thermal imaging. And we go in, and what the thermal image does is it gives you temperature differentials. Right. And so to the point, you see the water, but that's not where the water's coming from. <laughs> Right. And that thermal camera, under certain circumstances, can tell you where that entry point is. Hmm. So that will, you could think about getting an inspector out there to take a look at it as right. well. Either okay. a chimney sweep or an inspector, because then... Or a roofer. Or a roofer. Yeah. Um, but sometimes a roofer can't, they're not going to be able to tell you specifics. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're, 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 they're looking at the flashing. Yeah, they're just so, one thing. Whereas yeah. a chimney sweep can check the cap. They That's can right. check the flashing around right. it. They can tell you. They can the probably brick, give brick you condition. more. That's right. Yeah, brick condition, all that kind of yeah. information. Gotcha. All right, that's perfect. That's okay. That's what it is. All right, thanks, Jeff. Appreciate it. Have a good Sounds day. Sounds like he's driving around in the rain. Right. Yeah. <laughs> If you have a question and want to join in the show, send an email to fixit101 at mpbonline.org. Well, I'm Jason Klein here with Pam Pibus, ASHE certified inspector at Inspect It Like a Girl, and licensed contractor Jeff Sammons from Houseworks. Before we go to uh, Jesse and Mobile, we'll be right there. I wanted to talk to Pam. We were going to mention something today that was very important about we get a lot of calls on Fixit 101 about contractors how to hire one, uh, how, how to find a contractor, lots of different things. I wanted to mention today, if 
you don't have the best experience with a contractor, who do you talk to, Pam? Well, <clears throat> I brought this up because I've been sitting in court all week. <laughs> oh. um, and we do expert witness um, and have done some work with the Mississippi Board of Contractors. And the consumer really doesn't, I don't think the consumer understands that if you have a bad experience with a professional, mm -hmm. you can file a complaint with their regulatory board. For home inspectors, you can go to the Mississippi Real Estate Commission and file a complaint. If mm -hmm. you have a bad experience with a home inspector, that would be the first thing I would do. Right. Is go, and I've worked on most cases, unfortunately. If you have a bad experience with a contractor, mm -hmm. you can also go to the Mississippi Board of Contractors and file a complaint. It's pretty easy. I was looking at it this morning, as is the Mississippi Real Estate Commission. But those are the two governing boards over the um, professions that Jeff and I are a part of. And he and I both work to make sure. I know Jeff has a passion for this. I have a passion for uh -huh. this. We want to raise the professionalism. Exactly. Well, the thing that the reason why I wanted uh, Pam for you to mention this uh, was because I think when when someone has an issue with a contractor that that there's emotion there, there's anger, uh, sure, of course. and 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 some people first some people's first thoughts would be litigation, and but that's not necessarily how to deal with your problem. There's another there's another. Th place to go where you say hey this didn't work out well and then the contractor has opportunity right to make it better to make it good well you know right. th this is the way i look at a lot of those situations there's there's three sides to every story there's the contractor side uh -huh. which is going to be a little different than the homeowner side mm -hmm. or remodel or whatever the particular situation is and then there is the right side so <laughs> you know, a lot of times it it opens up both parties' eyes. And you know what? I didn't look at it like that. You, you know, you, you are right. And a lot of times the mediator um, can can bring those things out when you're when you're setting, um, you know, in front of the, the uh, board of contractors. So, so so the regulating bodies would be board of contractors for someone like you, Jeff. Correct. And f the regulating body for you, Pam, would be? The Real Estate Commission. Real Estate Commission. Mississippi right. Real Estate Commission. Yeah, okay. not, not, not it, which, is, which, is, which is supported by the state. Yes. yes. They, they okay. are state-funded as well as the Board of Board Contractors, contractors right. are state-funded. Okay. Right. Yeah, uh, and we're getting ready to um, – the Board of Contractors have been talking with me about – because I get a lot of these phone calls. OK, so I feel like my part in going in is to educate, educate the consumer uh -huh. about this is what your expectation is. And like I had I had something several weeks ago and I went out to investigate and really realized that the consumer caused the problem. <laughs> uh, a, lot of time, a lot of times that is right. It wasn't the builder. And I was able to present it in such a way that the consumer was like, oh, didn't hurt their feelings. That's right. Yeah, now I understand right. mm -hmm. what's going on. So it, it, you really need kind of a third party. And what I love that the Board of Contractors has done, back when I was doing work for them, they were hiring third-party inspectors to go out and check. And I was driving all over the mm -hmm. state looking at, at complaints. Um, and most of them were about paint. <laughs> right. You know, I mean, they, people didn't like their paint. And I was like, we don't do paint. I right. just want to make sure your house is not going to fall down. Right. Um, but now what they've done is they've hired their own investigators. So they've got in-house investigators that actually will go out, visit that site, um, and, and gather all of the information. Ooh. And then they will have, uh, um, what do they call it, Jeff, a, a meeting or a... Yeah. It's uh, you go to you go to mediation. Mediation. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, now I do want to clean up one thing on paint because that is one of our largest complaints. Complaints. Yeah. You know, we can walk in a house and it looks like you know a family of Smurfs have moved in because there's blue tape everywhere. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> and this is what I tell all of my new home buyers: take your fingertip, put it on the wall. Take your other fingertip. And spread your wings. That's about five or six feet. Uh -huh. Stand at at five or six feet away from that wall. If you do, if you do not see it at that point, it does not exist. There, there is no way 
we can take a piece of sheetrock because they come in several pieces. Right. We join them together and then we paint them. Right. There's no way that, I mean, I can take a, I can take a, mag- a magnifying glass or get up real close a to it. A flashlight. Yeah, or a flashlight. And I can see all kinds of right. tiny imperfections. Stand six feet away and use your house. Right. Okay? That's, you know, that's kind of um, every once in a while, if you listen to Felder Rushing on the Gestalt Gardener, someone will call and say, I have stickers in my yard. Mm-hmm. And he'll say, you need some flip-flops. Right. So, <laughs> well, uh, if, if, you, if, if, if you read our new home warranty book, uh-huh. it tells you that. Really? Six feet away from the wall. It do, you know, if you can't see it, it doesn't exist. Okay. All right, look, we've got some folks waiting on the phone for quite a while. Let's go to Jesse in Mobile. He was talking about repairing dishwashers. I had, I had uh, re- uh, replaced the seals on my dishwashers last night until like 930 at night. I'm done. <laughs> Jesse, what's up? Hey, how's it going, guys? Good. good. How old is the dishwasher? Uh, it's about six years old. Okay, ours was new to the house, so uh-huh. it's in that 13-year range. And according to the technician who came out about, uh, I think it was before COVID, so about three years ago, uh-huh. the bladder under the dishwasher goes out at about year 10. And we, I used it because I was the one doing dishes. On a regular basis, yeah. to the point that you'd hear it flushing, going down the drain, because it's, it's jetted out from that. Uh, essentially, it looks like a white octopus that only has two legs. Right. It looks like that. So water gets pumped in on one side, pumped out on the other, uh-huh. until that bladder cracks around your ten. And then you've got water in front or behind or water in places you don't think there's water. And in our case, we didn't know there was water until the wood baseboards around the island oh, bummer. started buckling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's normally the, how you find it. <laughs> yes. And the hint of mold was in the air. Oh, mm-hmm. no. Yeah. And then when we pulled the dishwasher out, oh, what do you know? There's discolored boards. And since the boards aren't painted, they look brand spanking new, except where the water's been soaking in. That was our issue, and apparently that part goes out like clockwork around your ten. Okay, so Hopefully I need to go back and thing. check, like yeah, pull that dishwasher out. Bad. Yeah. Yeah. Now you may want to turn the breaker off or unplug it, depends on how they wired the house, so you're not you know dealing with live water and electricity at the same oh, time. Oh, I time. promise you, I'll be turning the breaker off. <laughs> well, it scares me and to let death. me give you a suggestion on finding something like that, uh-huh. and it's really not a bad. You know, I know people think I'm crazy, but yeah. I have my house inspected every couple of years. So I don't have issues like this. But something you can do is take the kick plate off the front of that dishwasher, mm-hmm. which is the bottom plate. Turn it on and get down there with the flashlight and shine that flashlight underneath there. You'll be able to see if any water's coming out. Huh. Okay. Pretty I'll easy. try that. Yeah. Instead That's of, right. Instead of trying you to can. unscrew it and pull it all out, and right. then now your hose is going to be all crimped up and messed up, but you can you can kind of see down underneath there. Right. Okay. Jesse, thank you very much. I'm, I'm going to go do all this all stuff. Right. I appreciate it. Thanks. Man, I was going to get away with a $25 fix. <laughs> no, I was not. All right. Let's go to Mikey and Mobile. Pre-painting. What, what, what's going on with that? What do you mean about pre-painting? I mean, something that's connected with all the stuff y'all are talking about, about water, you know, um, yeah. starting um, uh, for specifically things to uh, work on on the exterior things. But uh, y'all can give me, please, share whatever you got, you know, it's like as far as interior, because it doesn't matter. I got both, okay? Um, uh, it, I, I'm not talking about pre-painting sheetrock before you install it. I, I, under, I, I kind of common sense know that that's probably not a great idea huh yeah well Uh, it's just a waste of paint well you can't sand it so that would be a horrible idea okay well anyway um but the the exterior thing is a more important for the things Mm -hmm. i'm um concentrating on right now um the hardy board or plywood um is it invasive to the contractor's plans if you do prepaint it or is it helpful? And uh, how, how do you? I mean, okay, it, you're you, you would not you would I, not I, prepaint hardy board. 
You or, wouldn't need or, to. Or, or, right, you don't need to. It's a concrete product. The only reason you are painting a concrete product is to give it a color. Is, is to is put makeup on it. <laughs> it. It does not require paint. But your point is well taken. If if you if you look on the instructions on your front door when we get a brand new door, it tells you you void the warranty unless you stain or paint the door on all six sides. So that means top, bottoms, both sides, front and back. If you do not do that, you void the warranty on that wood door. So, yes, paint or stain on wood is very important, and that is something we do um, so, so we don't void the warranty. Okay, well, I did um, – uh, sometimes contractors – I mean, like you said before also, and thank you so much for educating me, um, contractors and, and the consumer are not the same at all. Um, now, I do have a case where I have a happy outcome, uh, and that was putting in uh, the, stred, the treads on a, a stairwell, and um, the, I, I, it was, I polyurethaned him, and, and bullnosed, um, and uh, I asked the, uh, the subcontractor, um, should I do both sides? And he said, oh, no, don't worry about that. Well, I went ahead and did it anyway. <laughs> And um, it, it's made it through um, 11 feet of flooding. Wow. With that's no impressive. Wow. Thank you, Mikey. Asking. That's 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 some pretty big stuff there. And and thank you. I think the, the product, you know, that, that you're thinking of, um, and, you know, as Jeff said, you can paint anything and it's and it's virtually waterproof as long as the paint's still there. Thing is different though, right? I'm sorry. Polyurethane is different. It well, is. You have to read. Yeah, and it, the thing that I see people do with poly all the time mm-hmm. is they put too much on at the first shot. You know, you it you need to follow the instructions because if you put too much poly on, if you put too many coats on it, it's sticky. Everybody wants uh, their uh, poly coat. If you don't know what they're talking about, by the way, a poly coat is kind of a it's. Uh, it's a urethane, a clear yeah, coat. It's a clear coat, and and everybody wants it to look like the bar table at the roadhouse, you know, which is like a you know an inch of that stuff Air. thick, you know. It's not how it's going to look. It's a well, different. Well, you put that on your front door and put on too many coats, you're going to have flies sticking to your front door. Right. It's going to be a fly strip, and you won't be able to close it <laughs> or open it once you do. So. All right. Thanks, Mikey. We appreciate it. All right, we're going to keep moving. Dave is uh, uh, also in Mobile. Man, Mobile stretching gracious. out this morning. It, it's raining down there, so they're all inside. I did want to <laughs> say, you know, we're, we're sitting here talking about this. It, this show, by the way, is heard in all 50 states. It's it's heard in, in several countries around the world through our podcast. So we talk about it raining in Mississippi. Right. You know, and, and it has been. It's been That's raining right. for forever it, it in Mississippi. It has been raining. Listen, but, man, if you're listening in Arizona, right. I, I we're even, sorry. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We are so well, sorry. Even, I mean, Dallas. Dallas, right, yeah. you know. Oh, yeah. Dallas, Dallas is underwater is today. Um, I, I did, didn't we just get some water in Vegas or something? Yeah, yeah. Never Vegas, rained. Vegas flooded. Well, I got right. some uh, clients that moved here from California. I went out to check on something for them this past week. Uh-huh. And I, I was like, why did you move here from uh, California? And they said, because it's so green. Yeah, we got that. <laughs> it's like we, and there's water. <laughs> there's plenty of that. That's not the only reason they moved. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, so uh, Dave is on the line. He's got a question about paint. What's going on, Dave? Okay, you all have been talking about polyurethanes, which, uh, correct me on this, they are on alkyd uh, 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 base, correct? I am not sure. Someone else will have to answer that one. Okay, okay, okay. You uh, you clean them up with you know turpentine or some solvent of that nature. Correct. Yes. 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 Well, not, there's a water okay. base. Now, there are some water there, base. But, yeah. They, okay. I think you're right. Yeah. So. Well, guys, uh, and that's where I'm headed. Are you at all from Brenda Williams latex urethanes? Latex urethanes. Yeah. No. Is oh it, yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm familiar oh, yeah. with them. Okay. Are they, I mean, okay. it's a brush on? Yeah, it can be, or a spray. I you am, put in a sprayer. I am uh, in the process of uh, refinishing uh, the bodies of kitchen cabinets. 
and I have, you know, sanded, done the proper prep, and I have put a coat of Extreme Bond Primer, which is a urethane primer. It, uh, Extreme Bond, it will, you know, stick to literally anything. Mm -hmm. Then I am going over with um, Sharon Williams Emerald Urethane. Uh, in this case, it's white. Okay. Uh, I'm using a, uh, a stiff uh, uh, bristle brush. And, you know, there are uh, various uh, types of paint brushes. And I am, even on vertical uh, surfaces, I'm getting no sags, no brush marks. It looks like a sprayed surface. And nice. It dries, it dries to the touch in about an hour, uh, recoat in four. I have also used it on uh, exterior trim. And uh, are, you, are you giving this uh, success to the quality of the paint or of yes. the uh, the quality of maybe that super um, the bonding agent. bonding agent that you put up there? So, uh, what I did the uh, uh, exterior trim, I did not use uh, the bonding agent. Okay. Uh, Do you mind if I ask what that is? Was that like a kills or a bullseye product? Oh, oh, oh no, no, no. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, not even in the same league. Okay, okay. Uh, and, and, and primer, as far as when, when I'm thinking of primer, I'm thinking a lot of times different things around the house. You know, you use a, a wall primer for sheetrock. You know, there's lots of different primers that one uses, but it's almost usually I one think, of those two yeah I th extreme is what you said correct dave extreme bond yeah is that is that a brand extreme yes, yes. Oh, okay okay no, no it's uh, sharon williams Bob. sharon williams yeah. oh yeah, yeah. I gotcha. and and you probably paid a, a pretty good penny for that didn't you okay uh the uh primer uh i had to uh get a gallon unfortunately uh <laughs> If you do any painting, you know that supply chains and right. <laughs> some are, are difficult to find. So I ended up having to buy a gallon. Now, uh, a gallon of this primer was $63. Right, wow. yeah. A yeah. gallon. Now, yeah. now, the kicker, uh, I bought a quart of this urethane finish. Uh -huh. A quart was $45. Ooh, right, wow. yeah. That's yeah. ugly. That's about and 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 what we're going to speak to here, Dave, uh -huh. is the difference between going to a paint store and going to a big box store. The type of product you're going to get. I'm a paint snob. Uh huh. When I paint something, I don't want to have to paint it again in three or four years. So I I will spend the extra money right. on what they call a high viscosity paint. It means it's right. thicker and more thicker. Mm -hmm. And when it's thicker, it goes on easier. You don't have all the problems with it. It looks professional, and you don't got to paint again. See, these are why. This is why we have three people on this show and not one. Because <laughs> I know. You well, see, you're all like Captain Quality. I'm Captain Krylon. <laughs> I mean, I'm you know. I'm Captain. Somebody else is going to do it. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, ga grab me a can of paint. And let's go. Right. You know? so, yeah. I know. I love to paint. It's yeah. my one of my. It's probably my favorite DIY project. I think there's something wrong with you, Perry. I know, yeah. and I don't use tape. I'm really good with what? a trim brush, and but the better the paint. You no, know, you're right. The you're easier right. Well, it is to apply it. Don't know, listen to her, Dave. Use tape. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I said it before. That is one of our um, biggest things when we do our walkthroughs. Is the paint? Yeah. So, so it and and we have some excellent excellent painters uh, in our in our toolbox, but uh, paint is a big big deal. It and is, it, and yeah. it's hard. It's not something you know. Oh, I'm gonna be a painter tomorrow. Mm -hmm. right. no, I don't think mm -mm, so. Nope. Right. No. No. And you have it's to. It's an art. 
it is an art, and there's prep work that has to do to it. But what I'm hearing Dave say is that he did a lot of research. He right. bought the product he that he wanted. He bought the correct paint. That's he right. bought the That's correct right. paint, and he's having the results are awesome. Yep. That's yep. fantastic, and it, Dave. And it, a lot of that is due to the prep. Right. Yes. Right. All right. Thanks, Dave. We appreciate it a oh. whole lot. Are you still there? Yes, we are. Do we need to answer a question for you? No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> people uh, look at products like the high-end Sheridan Williams. Uh-huh. This urethane is a hundred dollars a gallon. Right. But, yeah. And they say it's because you're buying Sheridan Williams. Paint is one of those products that, depending on the quality of vehicle and the pigment, you get what you pay for. That's right. So, yeah, that's would, right. I would absolutely cut, agree. Paint. You know, come back in two years. Uh, I'm 79. I'm not going to do these cabinets again. Ever. <laughs> well, and and, and <laughs> something towards that, Dave. You're you're just right. Also, one of the things to think about if you're using the right paint, you don't have to go over it three times. Yep. You know what I'm now, saying? You know, I, he he, Dave brought up a, a great uh, um, um, point. Um, buy the best paint you can afford. Uh-huh. But think about this. If your substrate moves, meaning the part you're putting this paint on, and I'm talking exterior, if that if, if you're painting wood and it's not prime property and the wood starts expanding and contracting, it's going to crack the best paint. Right. So keep in mind, you know, a concrete board is not going to move on you, and that's why that's why the paint lasts so long on it. Right. Okay. And let me make a suggestion uh, just to our listeners. If you want to have a co- two suggestions. Number one, if you're interviewing painters and they say they can start tomorrow, you don't want them. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be on somebody's waiting list because there's a reason they can start tomorrow. Right. The other thing that, that I, I've never hired a painter but I, I, because I enjoy painting. But if you're going to hire a painter, mm-hmm. interview them and then ask them if you can buy your paint and they can put it on. And the reason I say that is because there could be a markup that if you don't specify the type of paint. Well, let me let me let me caution you on that from the other side of that. Um, I know that, that you may want to buy the paint, but that's Pam. And if uh, Pam knows stuff about paint. Well, if if Jason says I want to buy the paint, you may be getting you know the True. big box special of the day. That's right, and have to paint the wall four times before you leave. So well, maybe there is some give and take with that painter of you know they may know to get what paint. Well, I'm going to ask him where are you buying issue, your paint. <laughs> right, right. No, there's nothing wrong nothing wrong with with asking questions. My issue with the consumer buying the paint uh-huh. and letting the labor spread the paint. Uh, how about if there's an issue? Is it labor or is it paint? That's a good point. I want I want the contractor, just like my doctor. I wouldn't go to my doctor and say, "Use this needle." You know, I want you to use this because I can save a couple bucks. Right. Uh, same thing with my painter. I want my painter um, owning that job. I want them taking responsibility for that job. Meaning, you go get the paint. I want to know what it is. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm okay with that. I, I, I want right. to know what it is, but I want you getting the paint. I want you getting your paintbrush. I want you getting your right. drop cloths, everything. That way, if there's a problem, uh, Mr. Painter, um, we we have an issue. Right. It, uh, translation, you have an issue. Right. right. And You've got a, something you should fix. Right. Right. But I'm going to always ask. What's the quality of, of the course, paint? Of course, yes. And yeah. too now. I'm willing to pay I, more for the paint. Th- this has not happened in many, many years, but we had a painter once that took paint and watered it down and, mm-hmm. you know, stretched that oh, gallon bummer. out to 15 gallons. Right. And, you know, so those things happen. Right. But they're isolated. Find out where they're getting their paint, approve the paint, and let the let the contractor do his job. Right. All right. Good point. All right. Thank you very much, Dave. I really appreciate that. And 
you can join the conversation. Send an email to fixit101 at mpbonline.org. If you missed any of today's program, you can always listen back by podcast using any podcast app or our MPB public media app. Go down there, go download that now. Okay, so we've got an email here, guys, and it, and it was a it was a big email from from one person who who is a regular listener. Here we go. Hello, I've learned a lot from you, but you're scaring me half to death just <laughs> knowing what all can go wrong now. I have three. Oh, we're sorry. I know. I have three <laughs> concrete questions. I inherited the house my parents built the same year as Pam's, 1958. It is on a sloping site with the front at ground level. It has a full basement, making it appear like two levels from the back. The siding is brick. Two years ago, a licensed contractor put in a new concrete front porch that is 27 feet across. He used rebar and fiber and said that it is 5,000 PSI. It began to sink in a spot near the house, and when it rains, water pools there. There has been a little sinking in this spot before and is one of the reasons I wanted it fixed. He said it is sealed where it joins the brick and it should not be a problem. Recently, a hairline crack has formed where the porch joins the brick all the way around the porch. The other side is underground basement wall. What are your thoughts and should I be concerned? Okay, from looking at it on the radio, right? <laughs> it sounds like a soil issue. Interesting. And not a concrete um, because I don't, I don't care what the PSI is. I don't care about the fiber. I don't care about the steel mm -hmm. unless that soil is compacted and tested and meets minimum standards. You can put on there whatever you want to. If your substrate, which is the soil, right. starts to move, starts to sink, whatever's on top of it is going with it. So maybe the contractor may, may, uh, May not have prepped the soil? May not have. Okay. You know, how, how deep are the footings? You know, again, looking at it from the radio, right. we, I am... I am uh, um, guessing. Uh, I'm, 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 yeah, I'm <laughs> guessing a lot of stuff here. Yeah. So. yeah, and it sounds like, you know, soil moves because of bad drainage. And so, you know, working yeah, or, with... Or, or expensive clays. Yeah, and so, well, it's because of drainage. <laughs> there you right, go. Right. Yeah, because if it hits that expansive clay... It it kind of grows, and then whenever we go through a drought, it right. shrinks. That's right. So we're moving. Um, so the solution here probably um, is not a concrete solution. It's a drainage yeah. issue. It, Interesting. Yeah. Oh, and and too, it could be an underpinning. You know, I would I would call a structural engineer. And there's several, oh, interesting. Uh, there's several of them here. Call a structural engineer. Do an evaluation, mm -hmm. and then bid it out according to the structural engineer's specs, right. then if something goes wrong, you have something to hang your hat on, which is the back of the structural engineer. Okay. Or go outside right now with your umbrella uh -huh. and watch where the water's going. Right. Yeah, Everybody that's true. needs to do that right now. That's a good idea. Yeah, unless it's lightning. Go right, inside. yeah, don't do that. Yeah, yeah. No, don't do that. Fix It 101 is a production of Mississippi Public Broadcasting Think Radio and is funded by generous contributions from listeners like you. Our show was produced by Mr. Javid Chapman. Our call screener today was Charles the Intern. For Pam Pibus, Jeff Sammons, I'm Jason Klein. And join us next Wednesday at 9 for Fix It 101 only on MPB Think Radio. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand.